All right, hey, good morning, guys. Hope you guys are well. Um, we've done this before. It's always a, a unique time of year. Um, I hope you guys understand we can't get into the details. I'm sorry in advance uh, for any questions I can't answer, but I promise I'll do my best. And then I just look forward to catching up as the draft unfolds. Uh, that's actually the fun part for me as, as, as this thing uh, kind of rolls out. So um, I just want to take a moment um, and give a special mention to uh, Steve McMichael just what he means to our organization. You know, he's a, he's a man I've gotten to know in recent years. Uh, he's absolutely one of the first guys we call every year uh, to speak to our rookies. Uh, he epitomizes what it means to be a bear, uh, his passion, his drive. It always shines through every time he talks to our team. Uh, we're all thinking about him. We're thinking about his family uh, and just knowing what he's going through. A couple, uh, couple quick thoughts on, on the draft uh, before we open it up for questions. Um, everyone with our team is excited this week. Uh, our first draft pick, uh, our first draft with a first round pick since Roquan in 2018. Uh, the quantity of picks we have with uh, eight total draft picks. Um, it's all part of the roster building process that we go through, uh, the different phases of the off season from re-signing our own players to free agency and out of the draft. And you know, every team uh, in the NFL had a lot of challenges this year as we navigated through a much different college season. Um, a much different draft process as we prepared for this draft. And you, know, you got to get creative, you got to get opportunistic uh, in different ways we gather information. Um, and that preparation for us is a testament to a lot of people from our scouts, to our coaches, to our medical staff, I can go on and on. Uh, George and Ted providing the resources uh, and the understanding of the different times uh, that we're operating in. But we're ready for this week. We're excited for, to make our team better this week. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to take any questions. We're going to kick things off with Hub Arkush. Hey, Ryan. Good morning. Hope you're doing well, man. Um, I'm curious with this group. I'm, I'm not asking if you're going to take a quarterback. Um, but as you look at these, the, the five quarterbacks everybody's talking to, how do they compare just, just rating-wise or grade-wise to the other top uh, the first round top 10 top 15 quarterbacks you've seen in the last four or five years yeah I would say you know to, to be honest I'll just the depth uh, the totality of that group um, to be honest with you it, it is deep this year you know and it's they're all they're all different and every team's going to evaluate each one of these players different no different than any position and, and I think you feel I think you're not going through every position but you every year of course you feel different areas of the draft uh, where there's depth you know and and sometimes, you know, you know, we've been able to take advantage of that. I think, uh, you know, day three picks for us where there's been depths in that, that area of the draft, like when we took Tariq or Eddie Jackson or, or Mooney last year, uh, those were areas where I thought there was a lot of depth and it trickled into even day three because of that. Adam Johns. Hey, Ryan, I guess with those quarterbacks and working closely hand in hand with, with Matt, how – Adamant, has he been in those conversations about those quarterbacks? How much banging on the table has he done when talking about those quarterbacks? And then uh, the second part of that is Flip's uh, part in this, Laser's part in this. How valuable has that been in those evaluations? It's been really valuable, Adam. And it's, but for, really for Matt, what's been cool about it is he loves the scouting process so much. Uh, uh, you know, some coaches are more into it than others. And it, so it's offense, it's defense. Matt's involved in every single position we're talking about. You know, I remember last year, Adam, as we went through the corners and, and just his passion as we went through that evaluation process and, and Jalen Johnson and what it led us to. But yeah, I think, you know, what's, what's cool about with Matt and with Laser and with Flip, I, I think there's certain positions I think it is valuable if you've played that position. You know, and I think quarterback is one of those. And all three of those guys have pl played the position at different levels. And I think it comes into play as we're talking about that, that position and just the, just the different perspective they have on it and the different angle they ha have on it as we have, uh, as we have our draft uh, meetings. Dan Wiederer. Hey, Ryan. Uh, obviously, you've never picked outside the top 10 in the first round since you got here. Knowing where you guys are at at number 20, how do you describe the, the number of different contingency plans you guys have to be both accepting of and, and excited for knowing the, the number of different ways that this whole thing could break on Thursday night. Yeah, it is unique, Dan. I was just, you know, looking over the last 10 years and the players that have gone in this range of the draft. And as you look back on the hit rates of those players, 
you know, was there common denominators as you look in this range of the draft and those players? It's interesting. Um, and it is harder. Like when you're picking in the, when you're picking in the top 10, it's very easy to have 100% consensus throughout your building. I mean, we could have 15 reports on a player and in the top 10, everybody's got this guy paid. But when you go further back, you know, it, it, gets, it gets different, you know, and you and I, you know, I like to take everyone's opinions in and you're kind of weighing all that. And then I just think as an organization, we got to be ready for every single scenario. However, this thing plays out, however, this board falls, um, that's what, that's where all the pr preparation comes into play. And I feel like we're, we're in that spot, whether it's trading up, staying put, trading back, um, all those things are in play for us. And it just comes with the preparation. As, as a follow-up to Hub's question, how do you feel about the draft beyond the top five quarterbacks at that position? You know, that's where, that's where us as, as scouts and as evaluators, um, it's, that's the exciting part is challenging, challenge, challenging ourselves to identify those guys. And I feel like, I feel like we have, and not just quarterback in, in a lot of ways. And, you know, I can, I can go up there right now and, and talk to our coaches and scouts and everybody's, Hey, I love this player in the fifth round. I love this player with one of our four, six round picks. Hey, if we can figure out a way to get a fourth round pick, I love this guy here. Um, and we've done that with that position uh, and a lot of other positions. And it's just got to, board's got to fall a certain way and you got to uh, stick to taking the best player available. Jeff Dickerson. Hey, Ryan, uh, getting back a little bit to the challenges you spoke of early on, you know, not having the combine, not having the, you know, the visits and everything. Does that make it harder when you put together your draft board at the top of the draft? Or is that more challenging not having those interactions when it comes to maybe guys later day two, later day three? Which one's more challenging? I, I think it all is, Jeff. And I think, you know, you look at it as a challenge and, and we've taken it on like that. But yeah, you're right. Like not you know, access during the season was different. Um, players opting out, you know, that, that was different. We're watching tape on guys sometimes a year old, you know, and you're looking at that and you're watching them a year removed. And now you're, now you're putting weight on the pro days and how do they look at the pro day? You know, has their body changed? Have they maintained, have they improved? Um, all the different fluctuations that can take, take place. Uh, like you said, no combine, um, only three people allowed per pro day. Um, not not able to take those players out to dinner before or after the pro day, those things weighed. Um, so it's, it's challenges throughout. I mean, we had our medical meetings last week, and uh, some of that's been a challenge, to be honest with you. So I just think that's where we lean on the continuity of our staff and the experience and, and get creative on how we um, access some of that data and obtain some of that data. We lean on a lot of our resources. Um, but I'm not going to lie, Jeff, it, it has been challenging. Um, but that's part of that's, you know, the excitement of the job and, and we've taken that on and I feel like we're in a really good spot. Adam Hogue. Hey Ryan, uh, I actually have a non-draft question for you. Uh, I'm curious with what's going on with the players in the off season, what are, you, what are your expectations in terms of attendance, both virtually and if, and when you guys are actually able to get out on the field? Yeah. Adam, hey, we're, we're in the virtual portion now and it's, it's been good. You know, it's been good. We've had a really good attendance for that. And I think it's a credit to our, to our players and, and their passion and, and our staff. And as we work through that and, you know, right now it's voluntary. We got, you know, a good amount of guys coming up here and lifting right now. And, you know, I think taking advantage of the, the facilities that we have and, you know, it's, it's, it's safe up here, you know, with a lot of the, the COVID restrictions. So that part's been good. And regards, in, in regards to when they'll be here right now, our plan is, so phase two, that'll start uh, May 17th for us. So that's when we'll start our in-person activities. And uh, that's when we expect the guys to be here. And uh, it'll be good to see everybody in person. Pat Finley. Ryan, realizing that, uh, that we're not going to get much out of you if you look forward here for the next couple of days, I'm curious if you look back to the meetings that you and Matt had with, with George right after the season ended, what percentage of those meetings was talk about your quarterback plan and, and did that evolve uh, in, in the last couple of months? And does that plan look different now than it did then? Yeah. You know, what's, what's cool about it, Pat is, is those, it's not like we had this one meeting. That's all we talk every single day with about everything and about the quarterbacks and about our roster and about our staff. And so those conversations are always ongoing and they're ever shifting uh, and adjusting to the landscape that's in front of us. Some of it's in our control, some of it's not in our control, uh, and just exploring all the different options at the quarterback position and at positions throughout our team. But I think what's been really good is having um, 
them involved in those discussions. It's been, it's been very collaborative. So everybody, everybody knows what's going on uh, with every move we make and, and every turn we make. What role do they play in that collaboration? Um, it's really just been kind of a sounding board as we go through it, you know what I mean? And I think it's, you know, part of my responsibility is making sure that uh, communication remains strong throughout our building. Uh, there's no surprises. Everybody knows what's going on. And, you know, everybody understands the uh, kind, kind of the, every, every off season is a storyline, right? And every, and every day there's a different turn. And I just think uh, bringing our staff and our ownership along on that storyline is, is a big part of my job and responsibility, just keeping everybody informed. Mark Potash. Hey Ryan, uh, what do you what do you expect the participation rate to be on site for the offseason program, and how important is that that you get a higher attendance than some teams apparently will get according to the NFLPA? Yeah, Mark, as, as we that's a good question. As we approach that, you know, May seventeenth date, I you know I expect it to be good. I think you know just the feeling I have with our guys and the excitement of this offseason and the upcoming season. I feel it. I feel it from our leadership. Um, and I, I feel, you know, throughout our team, I can already tell Mark, the guys that are coming in now and just kind of the energy uh, and the momentum that I feel from that group. And um, I expect it to carry right into May 17th uh, when they can be here at Alice. And I think, Mark, us having the facility that we have, and you've seen it, it's, I mean, we're lucky to, to have the resources we have. And I think our, our players are excited to, to take advantage of that. These are you talking? I'm sorry, Ryan. Are you talking close to the 90 to 100 percent that you get in a normal season when you as far as an expected rate or that's, that's what our hope is, Mark? You know, we'll see. It's such a unique time. But, you know, we're optimistic uh, um, that a lot of the guys just this. We got a really close group, a really close locker room. And I think they enjoy uh, being together. They enjoy the competition. Um, and, you know, and there's some there's some tweaks, too, you know, with, uh, with Sean decides the defensive coordinator. I think it's important uh, for us to all be together and continue to grow as a team with our especially with our new additions. Thank you. Colleen Kane. Hey, Ryan, uh, obviously uh, last year was such a unique setup on draft weekend for you guys. I was just wondering if you can take us through what your setup is going to be like this year. Um, you know, how much easier is it going to be to be back in one room again? And then are you able to share if you and the staff members that are going to be there fully vaccinated yet? Yeah, Colleen, yeah, it's, it's awesome to be back at House Hall. Um, and so we will be in our draft room, taking advantage of all the technolo technology that we have in there. We'll have 10 uh, people in our draft room this year. We'll be spaced out. We'll be wearing our masks. We'll be doing all the right things. And then we'll have our, our scouting staff and our coaching staff here at House Hall during the three days of the draft in, in close proximity. Uh, some of us are vaccinated. Some of us aren't. So we're just kind of working through that. So we just got to be, you know, smart and, and cautious and careful as we go through it. But Colleen, we'll have 10 people in the draft room, you know, all spaced out. And we'll have our coaches and scouts here throughout the building so we can talk to them as needed um, as we go through the draft process. A couple more. Kevin Fishbane. Hey, Ryan. In, in past years, you talk about the conviction you have on a player uh, when you trade up for somebody. And, you know, we know you, you, you haven't been afraid to do it. Um, what, what kind of qualities, regardless of position, are, are, are you looking for when you do that? And how have those qualities maybe changed or evolved as you've gone through this process over the years? Yeah, I think when, I, when we trade up for guys, it's the first thing that comes to my mind, Kevin, is, is the conviction that we have throughout our building. You know, so I, you know when there's kind of a, a consensus pick and you can feel it from our coaches and scouts. And I, and I know that everybody's going to be excited of when we make that selection and walk out of that room, it gives me more confidence to go do that. And then, then all the other things that, that, that we value um, beyond the physical traits that I think gets refined every year, right? It gets refined um, with, our, with the experiences and, and that we've learned throughout these drafts. So, you know, we talk about guys having Bears makeup and, and all the cogs that, that we value in a Bears player. If a, if a guy has the physical traits, we have consensus throughout our building, and he has the makeup that we're looking for, it all factors into it. And I mean, I could go on and on, Kevin, the, the, the medical, uh, the intelligence, uh, the football makeup. Uh, there's just so many factors that go into it that as you're putting this, this, this puzzle together, uh, this, this pie chart together in each player, um, that kind of gives you confidence when to go up. You know? And then there's a, there'll be situations too that we've thought about when if there's enough players there and there's enough depth there uh, we could very easily go back and obtain more picks. So that's, that's an option too. Jason Leisure. Ryan, I know the draft 
uh, is about the long term, but given the restrictions you faced or limitations you faced in free agency, do you feel it's imperative that you find guys who can start right away with those first three picks? Yeah, it, it always is as we go into it, Jason. And I think you're, you're, always, you're always thinking now and then you're thinking in the future. And I think for us, you know, the draft's just about, you know, collecting talented players and sometimes, you know, not just focusing on, on a need right now. We, we talk about that every year and how that can get you in trouble. And we've referenced it in the past when you've, you've manufactured or you've pushed needs up the board. So for us, Jason, it's just, you know, collecting um, the best talent we can. Um, and that goes for any position. Uh, and just building our roster in total going forward. Larry Mayer. Hey, Ryan, how you doing? Good, Larry. <clears throat> Good. Um, just wanted to know, in terms of the 20th pick in the first round, obviously without naming names, how do you approach that? Do you look at like maybe a cluster of five players, six players, seven players who you might be interested in, and then maybe that tells you how comfortable you are moving up or down, or how do you kind of approach that versus – maybe having a top 10 pick. Yeah. I mean, we, ha we have, you know, our, you know, our board stacked by position, then it's stacked. Um, we call it a value line. So we have, you know, you know, picks one through 32 picks and then the second round and third round. So we can see how we would value and how we would stack it up in the first round, you know, and we know where there, there's a line. We, for us, there might be, there might be 35 players that we all think that are valuable of first round drafting in the first round. There might be, there might be 28, there might be 25, whatever it is, we know where that line is. So I think for us, um, based on how the board falls, uh, that's, that's when, it, when our game plan can change on, hey, we think we want to go up, we want to stay put, or we want to go back. You know, we, we kind of line them up that way, and it's, it's part of the collaborative process that we go through as we do this. Last one, Mark Grody. Hey, Ryan, with having two veteran quarterbacks on your roster, do you look at this as an ideal you know, scenario in which to draft a quarterback? Does that enter your mind in the thinking here? Um, I, I, you know, I do. I think if we did draft a quarterback, I do think it's a, it's a good room for sure. I mean, those guys are both have a lot of experience, uh, you know, at, at, uh, a lot of different experiences too, which I think is good. And I think the coaching staff that we have there at that position is strong as well. We talked about it earlier with Matt and with Laser and with Flip. It's a it's a strong coaching staff around that position, and we have a lot of veteran leadership in that room too. So, yeah, to answer your question, I, I do think it's a, it'd be a good room for a, a young player to enter. Um, but again, we're just going to take the best players throughout this draft. 